your dreams are bigger, bolder, and more badass than the life you're living now, but something just keeps getting in the way. Join certified coach and former therapist Diane Wingert for the Driven Woman Podcast. She'll show you how to get rid of whatever is holding you back so you can stop spinning your wheels and up-level your life. Get ready to hop in and buckle up. This is the Driven Woman Podcast, and we're heading for the fast lane. Hey, Driven Woman, and welcome back to the podcast. If you are a regular listener or even a brand new one, one of the reasons you might like this show is because we talk about feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Now, in the past, I have encouraged people to be fearless, to become fearless, to kick fear to the curb and so forth. But in reality, as long as we're human and we have a human brain, we need fear. Fear is normal. Fear is there to protect us. So we don't actually want to be fearless. In fact, today's guest, Heather Vickery, who is a leadership and success coach, says fearlessness is for sociopaths and three-year-olds. How's that for a mic drop moment? In fact, in her best-selling book, Fuck Fearless, Making the Brave Leap, We are going to talk all about the difference between the two and why we actually want to cultivate bravery, not fearlessness. We go through Heather's five-step framework, which very conveniently and cleverly spells out the word brave, B-R-A-V-E, in case you have trouble spelling. But I love the message. There were a couple of other things that were very unique to this interview. I haven't experienced as a podcast host before. It was a little uncomfortable, but I pulled my big girl panties all the way up to my chinny chin chin, and we just kept right on going. And it really made me love and respect Heather even more as a result. Here's what I'm talking about. During the interview, I expressed the fact that in nature, there are only two states, growth and decay. Heather immediately took exception to that and told me why, which was a very brave move considering it's my podcast. Two, she challenged me to join her in recording and posting a video every single day during the month of December on social media because neither of us was doing a lot of video and we had both talked about, yeah, I really should do more video, but uh, all this excuses. So she said, I'm challenging myself to record and post a video every single day in December. Why don't you join me? Now, we were recording the interview during the month of November, and I really felt put on the spot. But to be honest, I knew anything that would have come out of my mouth besides hell yeah would have been a bullshit excuse. So I said, hell yeah, or something like it. I don't actually remember. Anyway, she challenged me. I accepted the challenge. We were both brave and we both posted videos every single day in December. I learned so much from that experience that I'm truly grateful to Heather for, even though it was a little bit uncomfortable at the time she challenged me. So you're going to hear all that. You're going to hear all about her best-selling book and her personal story and way more than that in this interview. I know you're going to love it. So let's get started. Five, four, three, two, one, now. Well, I know you always hear me say that I have been so looking forward to this particular interview, counting down the days and all that, and it is no less true today. I met today's fabulous guest, Heather Vickery, at the She Podcast Live conference. Such a wonderful experience, but actually, I kind of indirectly met her two years earlier when I picked up her then business card. This was Before I launched my own podcast, long before I ever met her in person, I just loved the card and the message on it. And that is what we are here to talk about today, the difference between being fearless and being brave. And Heather has a lot to say about that. So let's get into it. Welcome. Thank you so much, Diane. I do love, it was so funny. I'm like, that's a really old business card. Where did you get that? I love that you got it and you held on to it for Two years, two and a half years. And I'm not even sentimental, Heather. It's just that, well, first of all, we have to tell them what the card says. Do you even remember? A life well lived, a business well run. Yeah. 
And it was promoting her podcast, The Brave Files. And I'm like, ooh, that's a great title. What's this about? Must be someone who talks about bravery. So of course, I was immediately hooked. You no longer have that book, but you now have many, many, many more listeners, downloads, fans, followers, and all that. And you also have a brand new and best-selling already book. And we're going to talk about that as well. So in fact, do you want to just hold it up? Let's just, for the people in the back, <laughs> you didn't, so you didn't hold it long enough. <laughs> you got to love this title, okay? Fuck Fearless with the little, you know, asterisk, but we know what we're talking about, making the brave <laughs> leap. And you have done so many amazingly brave things in your life and you help women and non-binary folk make amazing, brave choices and changes in their lives too. So you are a little bit of an expert. Where shall we start? Oh, goodness. you It's your show, Diane. You have to decide. <laughs> Although maybe it would make sense for me to just quickly share from where I sit and from what I share with the world, what I mean when I say choose brave over fearless. I love it. Because people sometimes think that's the same thing, that bravery and fearlessness are the same thing. I think that's the most, no, it's the most confusing thing because, you know, and we'll talk about this in depth, I'm sure, but most people think that feeling that they get when they're about to do something that they really, really want to do, that feeling that they get, that sensation and the thoughts and the emotions, fear, means don't proceed. Stop, hard stop, turn around, go back, worst idea you've ever had. And that becomes the end of that subject. But you have an entirely different take on it. So let's talk about it. Absolutely. That feeling. So first of all, neurologically, fear and excitement are the same thing. It's what we mentally attach to it that decides, is this a good thing or a bad thing? So let's take roller coasters as an example. You know, that feeling, or even my littlest one feels this, if we're driving quickly down hilly roads, that butterfly feeling, your belly jumps up, that's exciting. It feels exciting. And that can, it's fearful for some people it's the same thing. It's what do you decide? Oh, is am I in danger? Am I going to be harmed? Or could this be fun? And our fears are there for a reason. They're there to save us, help us, inform us. And a lot of times, the things that we fear, if we take them apart, we really get to know them, we ask really good questions. That's what I do as a coach, really good questions. What are we actually afraid of here? And what is it stopping us from doing? That's where we tap into bravery. Bravery doesn't exist without fear. It doesn't exist. You cannot be brave without fear. And we're going to be fearful of something. Now, Diane, your brave every day is probably different than my brave every day. And everyone listening, the things we find brave. I know for some folks, being on a podcast would be terrifying. That doesn't frighten me. It doesn't frighten you. We do it all the time. Mm -hmm. It did maybe once or put it out there. What if they don't like it? And so we sort of redefine consistently what we're afraid of or what feels brave to us. Fearlessness, on the other hand, is for sociopaths and three-year-olds. Fearlessness <laughs> Wait, say doesn't that take again. thought. Fearlessness is, is for, for sociopaths, sociopaths and, three-year-olds. and three-year-olds. Ooh, so good. <laughs> yep. I get it. Right. It doesn't require thought. It doesn't require intention. It doesn't require investigation or planning. It doesn't require getting honest with ourselves. It's just a blind plow forward. I'm going to do this and I'm not going to think about any of the consequences or do I really want this result? And I just, I want you to fuck that notion. Fuck fearless. Like this, this is not the best way to live your life. What I want everyone to do instead is choose bravely. So get good with those fears, understand what they are, why they're there for you, what they're trying to teach you, what they're stopping you from, because you can learn. It's all learned behavior Hmm. to say, all right, fear, I see you. I appreciate what you're trying to do for me. I'm going to do this anyway. So just put you in the pocket and we're going to go ahead and we're going to be brave. Yeah, I have the same philosophy and live my life by the same principles. I Think about it as instead of letting fear be in the driver's seat, 
maybe you can ride shotgun if you keep your fucking mouth shut. Otherwise, you're going to go to the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> and if you kick me, if you kick the back of me, you're going in the trunk. <laughs> like, you can come along because I know you're part of the deal. Like, I don't get to do exciting, yeah. scary slash things without needing to engage with my fear and convert it to bravery. But yeah. how much room do you let it have? You know, how big a, how big a space do you let it take up? Yeah. Yeah. And I will say that a lot of times, especially lately as a business owner, and I, let me go back a second. I have learned to really tap into my intuition physically to understand how intuition lands in my body and what that's telling me. So I tend to get butterflies, something happening in my Mm -hmm. solar plexus, which is a go sign. If it Mm -hmm. shows up in the back of my neck. It's a stop sign. Mm. And and sometimes that fear will show up in my solar plexus, but it's like really fucking terrifying. I made a huge financial investment in myself and in my business earlier this year. And I 100% thought I was going to throw up as I did it. It -hmm. was putting a lot of money on a line that I didn't have yet because I believed it would get me where I wanted to go. And it was that kind of terrifying fear that I thought, that means it's a good sign. It's so, I'm so terrified of this that I know it's there for me. Now we have to dig a little deeper into this, Heather, because there's a lot of, I think, confusion and a lot of conversations that are very misleading around, is it anxiety or is it intuition? Especially for those of us who have a trauma history, which unfortunately is probably more than 50% of humans and certainly more than 50% of women and non-binary folk. So how can you reliably know? I'm like, I'm totally with you on the physical sensations and where they reliably show up in your body because most people do have patterns. If it feels like this, Mm -hmm. that means if it feels like that, that means, but it takes some training to really develop that awareness and even more than learning to develop the awareness, learning to trust that awareness, right? It's, it's, a, it's a process, right? But are there times when it's you feel like, process. right? And it can take years even, but anxiety, anticipation, eagerness, and intuition can sometimes get a little convoluted. You have some thoughts about that? I am not your expert on that because I do not experience anxiety like that. Hmm. I have some children who do, uh, some family members who do. I do not have anxiety. That doesn't mean I don't get anxious about things. It doesn't mean I don't get nervous or like antsy or, oh, but the kind of anxiety that's like debilitating, can't function, all of that. I don't have that. And I I feel really lucky to be able to say that because I know many, many, many people do. I would venture to even say at this point, you know, most people do on some level. And so it's challenging for me actually to, I have to really do my work to show up for folks who do have anxiety like that, to be able to support them as a coach, as a parent, as a friend. Cause you know, I want to say like, well, just embrace that or just, you know, decide that's not going to bother you today. And I know that that doesn't work. It does work for me, but it doesn't work for people who really experience anxiety. That said, and you said this earlier, the more we do something, the more comfortable we get with doing something. And so sometimes we're going to have an anxiety attack. It's going to come on. There's nothing we can do about it, but we do know ways to maybe pull ourselves out of it faster. There are systems that once we're aware of our patterns of behavior, that we can have ready to go to take us from point A to point B and to not stay in that space. So I get scared all the time. I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm not afraid. People want to call me fearless all the time. And I laugh. And I'm like, that's literally the opposite of my platform. But thank you for playing. Read the um, book. <laughs> <laughs> but I know like, okay, what, why am I afraid of this? Like what part of this is hard? And I'll give you a really interesting example. I don't know when this episode is going to air. And at the conference that we were at together, the She Podcast Conference back in October, I attended a session about doing challenges and how that could help you grow and help you grow your audience. And here is the thing that I most dislike. I don't use the word hate. Really, I don't because it doesn't set well with me. I'm not a fan either. (laughs) Video. 
Oh, I do not. Oh, I'm so like, glad you're going here. It. I go on I'm so stage. Glad you're going here. <laughs> I do a live show. I do a live show every week. I hate video. I don't mind. I don't mind this because we're having a conversation. But if I'm the person in front of the camera and there's nobody on the other side, I hate it so much. I have no words to tell you, even though I don't say hate. I really dislike you it. You just did several times. Just, um, I could take I those know. out if you want. <laughs> Take them out. Um, You're just I just, being passionate. I don't, yeah, I have a complicated relationship with the word hate. I am feeling passionate. So I attended that session and I thought, well, what would be a good challenge? I just wrote a book. I just published a book. That was a chat. Like I, and I wrote the book during NaNoWriMo in 2020, National Novel Writing Month, which was yeah, such a so challenge, good. like an intentional yes. challenge. Here's what I decided to do is for the month of December... And I literally bought the domain earlier today. I'm setting up a landing page today. I think I've lost my mind. I'm going to do a video every day for 31 days that says my brave today. Here's what was brave for me today. And every day is going to be different. And some days I'll probably do things everybody will think is brave. And some days I'll do things where people will go, really? You took a shower? That was brave? What's the big deal? All I wanted to do was stay in bed. Mm. So yeah, it was brave. Right. And then I decided to open it up. Do you want to do it with me, Diane? You want to do I my right today challenge with me? I, you know what? I can't believe. I, and see, this is to me, this is how intuition often shows up. And also just synchronicity. When you, you meet someone, you like them, you vibe with them, you like what they're about. They will often say something that is so timely and be completely unaware of it. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe she's talking about this, this very thing. And also... The bravery involved. I have no problem speaking my mind. In fact, most of the time people can't shut me up even when they've had enough. <laughs> I have no trouble writing <laughs> and speaking, but video is like, oh, just put a bullet through my head. I so don't want to do video. And yet I know it's the next challenge that I really must confront because, you know, we, we, we have all the same data. Video is what's happening. And if you really want to expose people to your thoughts and your message, you really want to help people in the way that you're uniquely qualified to do so, you got to get your ass on video. But I have been dragging my feet like, please. And for the, probably for some of the same reasons and some different reasons. Talking to you, I'm not thinking about how I look, how I sound, my background. I'm not thinking, I'm thinking about you in this conversation. But when it's just you talking to no audience, all of that has to be filtered out. So yes, I don't even want to know any more of the facts. Sign me up. Sign me up. Yeah. I will do it because... All right. Yes, I'll do it for all the reasons. Perfect. I will be brave with you, Heather. What a perfect yeah. challenge. I think yes. that'd be fun. All in. Thank you. It's yes. so much. And that's part of it. It's so much more fun to be brave with other people, to shout it from the rooftops, to say, I'm doing this. It unleashes something in everyone else, whether it's an audience or a family member or a friend or a community. It unleashes their inhibitions a little bit. It allows them to accept that what they maybe thought was basic is, in fact, brave. And it brings community together. We get a lot more done like that. Preach. Preach, preach, preach. It's absolutely true. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing, Heather, don't we always, I mean, not only do we confuse fearlessness and bravery and we think I can't take action until I eliminate the fear. Wrong. You can cultivate mm. bravery. Yeah, it, doesn't it is work a choice. Like that. No. And not only that, yeah. it's not a personality trait that you have or don't have. It is a choice and a skill that can be mastered yeah. over time through practice, practice, mm -hmm. practice, just getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and doing the thing that you're afraid of until you're either less afraid Absolutely. or you've convinced yourself you can do it anyway. So why did you decide to yeah. focus? I mean, you're a coach, you're a speaker, oh, you are a leader. Not, you're, there's a third what? option. Oh, a third option. I love options. What? Tell me. There's a third option to that. I, we must have a little lag. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, um, just a little bit. You don't have to wait until you're a little less afraid or I don't even know what you said because we got distracted. Or you, you, you're learn, learning to do is, it with, with um, the fear. Oh, yeah. The third option is, is simply like being fucking terrified and going. Like you don't have to even be less terrified. Mm. You just have to want the result on the other side. It has to be worth it. You can be completely fucking terrified. But if it's worth it, you just dip your toe in. And then you get to those second, the first and second things that you listed. Then you 
get to prove that maybe it's not so scary or that you really can or that you're capable or that people won't hate you or whatever it is, right? A lot of times we just have to close our eyes and leap. And you're also reminding me because as a person with ADHD, my brain is not wired to do what is important or what I'm told is important, what other people think is important, what I quote know is important. My brain is focused on what's interesting, what's challenging, what's novel, what I'm curious about. So I have to focus on doing the things that attract me in some powerful way, because otherwise my resistance is fierce and usually will prevail. So you're bringing up a very important point about Mm -hmm. being brave is to focus on the things that matter enough to you that you are willing to override that normal biological pattern of holding yourself back, right? You have to really want it. And I think a lot of people struggle with actually knowing what they really want simply because they don't have enough experience overriding fear, right? I know I'm setting you, I'm cueing you up. So before we, before <laughs> like we where, actually, I got the book come in, <laughs> girl, I got my copy. I got my copy. So <laughs> I'm queuing you up to talk about the book because I really think everybody should buy it. Everybody should read it. Like, and you should list, follow her, listen to her podcast. She's fabulous. There's so much more where this juicy goodness came from, but why, before we go directly into the book, why did you decide to focus your coaching business, your message, your community, your leadership on bravery? Because you have so much life experience and so much that you could teach and share and lead from. Why this? Because it's what saved my life. That's a because question that demands more. I found <laughs> I found myself in a situation that a lot of people find themselves in. Uh, Mine was was maybe a little different, but a lot of people get in this space. I followed all of the rules of society. I did all of the things that I was supposed to do. I got married to a man. I had children. I wanted children. Don't get me wrong. I was very sure that that was the only way I was going to get them. Um, You know, the only thing that I really bucked society on was I learned very early on in my life right out of college that while I worked well with people, I do not work well for them. And my parents are both entrepreneurs. So after a couple of really shitty jobs, I had decided I was going to just do my own thing. And I didn't know how and I didn't know what. And I just said, well, we'll figure it out because I'm not going to work for that person anymore. (laughs) But I found myself, you know, a decade down, down the line, really unhappy for a multitude of reasons. But the core reason was that I was married to the wrong gender. And it took a lot of work and a lot of honesty and a lot of years and and a lot of years of not being honest and of totally hiding and living very fear-based and, you know, what in the world am I going to do? But eventually there was a moment Quite frankly, it was a really interesting moment. There was a moment at the breakfast table with my four, I have four daughters, and they were really little. Uh, the baby was a baby baby. And I hated myself, and I hated my life. And my life was perfect, picture-perfect American life. I had a thriving business. I had four beautiful little blonde babies. We had, you know, my ex made a lot of money. We had a perfect house, the biggest house in the neighborhood. Like people from the outside house, looking dream, in and I hated yeah. being there. Perfect life. Yeah. Mm, that's yeah. And everything I did was fear-based and I felt terrible all the time. And I thought, what would I tell my kids if they came to me in this situation? What is the advice that I would give them? And the answer wasn't, well, you made your bed, no sleep in it. It wasn't, well, just suck it up. I knew then that if I wanted them to go out and live their biggest, boldest life to put themselves out there vulnerably and authentically because the world wanted them to, I had to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I had to be able to show them how to do that. And it unlocked me. It really did. It it was just in a split second, I went from fear-based to limitless possibility. Like, okay, okay, then I can do this for them. They're the best why ever. And I don't know how, but I'll figure it out. And that's bravery. Right. And so I just started that year. I picked brave as my word of the year. And I'm like, I'm just going to go learn how to do things I don't know how to do, like get a divorce, like 
buy a house. Like, you know, like I completely transitioned my business. I closed a thriving, successful event planning business and opened a coaching business, like all of these things, Mm -hmm. public speaking. You know, I sang from a stage for the first time in 25 years. I have a musical theater degree and it was really not very good, quite frankly, but it, I did it right. And so leaning into my bravery brought me back. It rekindled my relationship with my mother, which had been very good when I was young and then was very not good with a lot of other people in my past. It allowed me to show up because what happens when we hide from ourselves is we shut ourselves off from everyone else. We hide from them, too, because we don't know who we are, who we're supposed to be. So we don't let people in. And once I came out literally and figuratively of the closet, but of myself (laughs) and chose bravely Instead of letting that fear shut me down, it saved my life. And I started to put what had worked for me together to help other people. But I always say coaching found me. I didn't find it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I started to do these things. And then people said, hey, Heather, I want to do this. I want to try this. I want to start this. I think you can help. Will you talk to me? Will you talk to me? I think you can help. And I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) I'm supposed to be doing this. Which Uh, is brave. That's intuition piece started to come into play. Well, which is brave because, you know, not only, I mean, I burned my life down a couple of times, actually, like to the, to the cinders. I didn't know how to pivot. Yeah. I didn't know how to evolve within the existing structure. So I literally burned my career down, burned my marriage down, like burned everything down and started over completely from scratch, which seemed reckless, crazy, did not seem brave. Looking back, I realize that actually a lot of the same people that were throwing shade on me and giving me shit and writing me hate mail were doing so not because they thought what I was doing was wrong, because they were seething with envy that they didn't have the guts to do it themselves. Yeah, That took a long time to That's figure right. out. Yeah, That took a long time. And I think it's one of the reasons why I, I when I picked up that card two years ago, I'm like, sooner or later, I'm going to connect with this person. Because I think people who live with bravery, and I'm, I think I'm guessing you would agree, don't often think of themselves as brave. At least they don't entirely see themselves as brave as other people see them. Because I think it's, it's like you say, you are ratcheting up your ability to tolerate the discomfort and to realize, oh my God, my head didn't explode. I wasn't struck by lightning. I didn't take the express elevator to hell. Like I'm still here. I'm still thriving. And actually living with bravery is making my life better. It's making my business better. I'm a better parent. I'm a better friend because I'm actually being honest with myself and others. Yes. Bravery and requires I honesty. And oh my God. I don't, I don't think I really realized how dishonest I was. And most people are because they think being honest is too risky, too scary, too dangerous. And I'm like, that's a sad commentary, but. No, it's true. I mean, you said something that uh, I've really been thinking in the last several days a lot about perspective. We all have one. <laughs> <laughs> and we often have a different perspective of a shared experience than somebody else who shared that experience with us. True. And what gets to be true? You get to be tr- like your perspective of a shared situation is as valid as someone else's is. And the question is, what do you then do with that? Do you feel attacked or harmed or hurt because your perspective is different than theirs? Or can you say, that's not the way I see it. That's not the way I experienced it. Okay, I hear you. I can hold space for you. Anybody that's that's been divorced. I'm thinking anyone that's been divorced (laughs) and has children and wants to have any kind of successful or even tolerable co-parenting You have to learn how to master that to some degree. Hey, it's Diane with a quick interruption to the episode because I've got a couple questions I just need to ask you. One, are you where you want to be in your business? Are you making the money you want to make, working the hours you want to work, seeing the clients that you want to see, and getting the income and impact that you went into business to get? And if the answer is no, what's holding you back? Why is there a gap between where you are and where you want to be? Do you know the answer? 
in my experience working with female solopreneurs, so many of them don't even really know what's standing in their way. And that is so frustrating. So I created a little quiz called What's Holding You Back? There's a link to it in the show notes. If this is you, please take the quiz. And if you do, DM me on Instagram at Coach Diane Wingert and let me know your results. Now, on the other hand, if you already know what's holding you back, if you already know what the obstacles are that are getting in your way from achieving the income and impact that you deserve and desire, then I don't want you to take the quiz. Forget about the quiz. Go directly to the other link in the show notes and book a consult with me. I may be the very coach and this may be the year that you put all of that behind you and really have the business that you went into business to have. For everybody else, keep on listening. And if you find value in what you hear, don't forget to leave me a rating and review on Apple or wherever you're listening. Here we go. Back to the show. I adopted this phrase of this is what we do here instead of trying to make it like for the longest time I was trying to make it fit everybody's needs where you were attracted. Yes. So that was, I think, the struggle bus. And I don't think I was aware of that. I was um, just because I love people. And when you have potential, I can help you get there. So I think I was allowing too much wiggle. And that's what you helped me through, mostly, in my memory, of like figuring out that it's okay to say, you know, this is what we do here. This is that stance. And that's how Beyond Common, you know, 12 Essentials for Success in Life, it finally was completed. It was just like... This pieces and parts of things that we had done that worked to make us successful. But it was like through that figuring out how to connect everything. And definitely your influence helped me so much. Like it was like, you know, you're, you're an angel. So let's, let's dive into Fuck Fearless. What can people expect if they buy this book? What, yeah. what is their experience of learning Thank from you in this way is? So uh, several years after that moment that I shared with you, the breakfast table moment that I shared with you, I started to collectively put together what it is that I do, what can that look like? And I I wanted to create an acronym, a method that worked. And of course, Brave made the most sense. So I took all of the different parts of what had saved my life and what I'd started coaching and helping people with. And I organized them in a way that made sense. And I created what I call the Brave Method. And so Brave stands for Boundaries, mm. the three R's, reassessment, reframing, resilience, which are probably my favorite. Action, accountability, vulnerability, and then expand and empower. And the first four are interchangeable. You use them when you need them, how you need them, different ways, different times in your life, in your business. But the fifth one is that's your result. By showing up and doing this work, you will expand and empower yourself. And very quickly, I'd like to tell you all, to remember that expansion and empowerment are gifts that you only give yourself. No one can do that for you. No one gives you that. No coach, no mentor, no anybody who says they empower you. No, they don't. You do that for yourself. Yes. When you show up and you do the thing, whether it's the brave method or anything else that you're choosing, then you empower and expand yourself. No one can give you that ever. They can inspire uh, me. I, I hope I can inspire. I can mentor. I can guide. I can lead. I can teach. But I don't empower you. That's yours. So the book breaks down the Brave Method in really small, fun, bite-sized ways. I tell the, a lot of personal stories, memoir stories. I have case studies that I call Brave Spotlights, where I feature either guests of my podcast, The Brave Files, or clients that I've worked with and show how what they're doing fits into that particular category in the brave method. And then also what I call brave action. So things you can go and do right now to lean into this space, to show up for yourself, to expand and empower yourself and make it work. And my hope is that people will read it all the way through and get what they want out of it. And then write all over it. I'm, I like love books and I'm like, keep them perfect and pristine and don't bend the pages. I don't want you to do that with this book. I want you to love it so hard. I want you to highlight it and write in it and make notes and put little sticky tags in it so that when you need something in particular, you can go back and find it and it can support you. This work never ends. You're not going to read this book and do all these things one time and then never have to go back. 
it's going to meet you where you are as you are ever evolving and changing because change is the only constant. I love that quote so much. And I think of it as continuous personal evolution, like a continuous upward spiral. Absolutely. A lot of people, they think they want to get to a certain mm-hmm. point and then they're going to be done. I'm like, mm, I prefer to think that in nature, there are only two <laughs> states, growth and decay. So unless you're growing, you're actually decaying because life moves on without you. It doesn't wait for you to catch mm. up. It doesn't hold space for you to just chill. I think that could be dangerous, Diane. I agree that it could be because what one person might think of as growth and another might think of as growth might be because you could be in a state of almost like hibernation where you're growing on the inside. You're doing a lot of imagining. You're doing a lot of envisioning. Yeah. Be careful with that language, I think. I think that could be yeah. triggering. Resting I think that could be triggering. is really important in growing. I think it really could be. People, especially perfectionist people pleasers, folks who mm. don't have, are not empowering themselves in the ways that they would like to, are going to think if they don't go harder, they're going to decay. And so I, I hope it's okay. I call you. No, 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 no. Hey, show, listen, I'm really in this space where I want people to know sometimes the bravest thing we can do is fucking stop is to sit still and listen and be and just shut it all down for a little bit. There are days where that is absolutely the bravest thing you can do, because sometimes when we push too hard, we are hiding like a motherfucker. You're fierce. And I appreciate it when I appreciate it when my guests challenge me, because what I'm thinking of as decay and what you might be thinking of as decay, I, I, you're, you're helping me recognize that could be challenging and that could be triggering. And someone might hear that as what I refer to as toxic productivity, which is not what we want. Mm-hmm. And you're right. I think the mm-hmm. bravest way to live is to not follow the herd. The bravest way to live is to right. get quiet enough to hear your own voice, your own stirrings, your own unmet needs, your own longings, that the rest of the world is so noisy that if you're following the herd, you're never going to be able to hear that. In fact, I'm reminded of something I wanted to come back to from earlier in the conversation. You said that you learned to trust your intuition. We're going to come back into the book in just one second, but I want to make sure I don't forget this because I think it's going to be good. You learned to trust your intuition. How did you know that you weren't already doing that? Was it because you were still in your previous Mm -hmm. marriage and you realized you were not living authentically with who you were? Oh, goodness. Uh, I, the best answer I can come up with for that does relate back to the book. I utilized my three R's. I took the time to reassess what had happened, what was happening, what did I want to happen to reframe it in a way that was going to help me move forward the best, healthiest way possible, and then be resilient and get up and do it again. When I paused to do that, I went, oh, those things happen every time. If we don't Mm -hmm. use the three R's, if we don't sit back and reassess, reflect, reframe, get back up and do it again, we miss it. We miss the signs. And awareness is magic. Awareness will, you will change your patterns, habits, and behaviors without even intending to or knowing that you're going to once you become aware of something that is good or bad, something that you want more of or you want less of. You lean into it. It's just nature. It's just how we are. So I realized I paid attention and I thought that always happens. When something right is there, I feel it in my solar plexus. And when it's not, and then I, I've gotten to a point where you, where you train it and you can just feel it almost instantly. But mostly I just, I just paid attention. Which I think is also brave because if you think about how we are culturally conditioned, we are culturally conditioned to not pay attention to ourselves, but to pay attention to the media, to pay attention to other people, to pay attention to influencers. I mean, it, it makes me yeah. crazy when people say, just tell me what to do. I will do no such thing. I'm not going to tell you. How can I possibly know what you well, should do? Well, that's not this a is, coach's job. Yeah. No, it's it's not. But it's like, just tell me what to do. It's like, why would you hand over that much power? 
to another person by choice. Like the real value in life is discovering who you really are, what you really want, what you're meant to do, and how to make that happen. When you, it's almost like I can never understand when you go out to dinner and people say to the waiter, what's the most popular item on the menu? Who cares? Most people don't know what they're doing. Why do you want the most popular? What do you want? What would make you happy? Do you challenge me again? Well, and I totally agree with that. Yeah, a little. I totally agree with you on that. I'm a really picky eater. So I probably don't want what most people want. But sometimes I do ask the server, what's your favorite thing? That's different. Because it's fun if I don't have an opinion. Sometimes mm-hmm. I don't have an opinion or I I can't decide between several things and I want to go, oh, what is it that you like? And then I often don't get what their favorite thing is. And they go, what'd you ask? I'm like, I just wanted to know, you know, I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, but also there are some, you know, some, t- I am such a type A, I'm such an alpha and I get so tired of making decisions. And sometimes the bravest thing we can do is say, I don't fucking care. I don't you want choose. to make the decision. I like everything on this menu. Bring me what, whatever you want. Surprise me. I could use a little surprise in my life. I have done and that. And I guess that's the core of my point. And, and what I do in the book is quite frankly, that none of these apply at all times to all people. Like you could, I could find a way to go, well, what about like this to almost anything, even I say to anything, yep. any of us say, like Absolutely. do what you want with it at the right time when it feels right. If you want to be in charge and in control, you should be, if you can be, if you don't, don't. And then set those clear boundaries, right? Like choosing a dinner restaurant is a great example. It drives my partner insane. She gets really stressed out trying to come up with a place to eat. What if it's wrong? What if nobody likes it? And so I often make those choices because it causes her so much anxiety. And if I really don't want to make the choice, I'll say, you can't screw this up. Yeah. I don't like, I I just can't make another decision. Mm -hmm. And so I make, yeah, I make it safe for her to do that. I'm going to ask you something else about the book. I'm not very good at following directions. And I think, you know, there's certain people that just, <laughs> we, we become entrepreneurs because we're better at um, making the rules instead of following them. So, and also I have too many questions like, why are we doing it that way? Well, have you tried this? Well, what about that? And it's like, you're insubordinate. No, I'm curious. And I'm just questioning. What do you think about reading the book out of order? Because that's actually what I'm doing. Like I, I think the method is great. I think the framework is great. I am a huge fan of all things related to resiliency and boundaries. And I am 100% with you that we must empower ourselves. No, if someone says they're an empowerment coach, run, because no one can empower you but yourself, unless, <laughs> unless that's yes. what they teach, unless that's what they teach, how to empower yourself. But I'm going to the sections that like, I want to read about this right now. I think you can read it in any order you want. And I think what's especially enjoyable about it is that because you're teaching, you're sharing stories, which, you know, I think that's just the best way to get a point across is to share stories. You're being authentic. You're sharing personal vignettes. You're also sharing guests and clients. And so if your particular life experience isn't relatable, someone else's is. I love the action points. It's like, try this, do this, because I think that's one of the things that separates this book from most books that you would consider personal growth or self-help is that while you're reading the book, you're having this wonderful experience and you're feeling enlightened and you're feeling inspired and you're feeling motivated. And then you put it on the shelf and you go back to your quote unquote regular life. You actually show people and this is how you do it. And this is how other people have done it. And this is how I've experienced this. And here's an action you could take to start to implement this today, which I think is the missing ingredient for so many people who want to help and lead others is they may have a great story, they may may have a great framework, but if you don't show people a point of entry where they can plug into it themselves, like now with a baby step, Mm -hmm. it's a missed opportunity. Most people won't be able to sort of make that leap. And I think you do that really well. Yeah, thank you. You can absolutely read the book in any order you want. I will say when you're writing a book, it's important to have a flow and things do build on one another. Uh, Some things may not make as much sense because you maybe didn't read the foundation that was laid prior to that. 
So just know that if you choose to read it. So that's why I, that's why I've been telling folks, read it all the way through and then go back to the sections you want to go back to whenever you want. But also the very end of the book. So maybe you've read this already or not. I tell you, like literally the very last thing I share before the final Brave Spotlight, which is a case study and my acknowledgments is my number one rule. Did you read that yet? Diane? No. You know and I, I think that is? that is a great place for us to wrap the interview because I was going to ask you to share your yeah. favorite story or your favorite quote from the book. And you just intuitioned that, made it my own word. And here we go. <laughs> my number one rule is that there are no fucking rules. Do it however you want to do it. And the way you want to do it today may be different than the way you want to do it tomorrow. And that's okay. So read the book, however you want to read the book, just know that maybe some things will um, maybe not land exactly as I intended, because you didn't get some foundation there. But that's okay. Yeah, you might not even realize it. So what is your next brave action, Heather? I mean, writing a freaking book and getting to bestseller <laughs> status, like oh, instantaneously, yeah, that's pretty freaking cool. I know it kicked your ass a little, but um, I know you are a person who is also on a path of continuous evolution. So chances are you've got something yeah. ahead that's uh, calling you. <laughs> yeah, there, there are a couple of things. Um, I've been in this really strange, chaotic space of where do I want to go? What do I want to do for the last several months? And I am creating a really approachable membership that combines some coaching and community and accountability and some training, which is going to come out. We're going to launch that in the first quarter. I'm not exactly sure when, February, March. I'm mm -hmm. going to do an in-person event, mm. uh, which I'm very excited about. So a two-day intensive hands-on workshop, taking you through the Brave Method, getting you on a good plan. That's coming in the first quarter as well. Really excited about those things. And then this past weekend, I launched a new podcast. What? Which you will love, by the way. What? Yeah. Give me the dates. I so, didn't even know. It's called Was It Chance? And mm. I met my co-host at Podcast Movement Conference in, in Nashville in August. And we hit it off right away. We knew we were going to be buddies and we're talking. And I said, I've always wanted to do a show about this. And he said, well, let's do it. And we launched it this weekend. Uh, we were actually together. I was in New York. I was in Brooklyn for my for Thanksgiving with my partner's family. And he lives in Brooklyn. And uh, we put it out there. We did some live recordings. And it's pursuing the concept of creating chance and opportunity and what manifestation actually is, right? Because it isn't thinking a thought and then it just becomes. It's thinking a thought and then changing your behavior and your action to thoughtfully and intentionally create it. And so, yeah, uh, that just came out. We've got two episodes out right now and it's really fun. So pick your poison. You can listen to the Driven Woman podcast, the Brave Files podcast, Was It Chance?, a uh, lot of fun stuff happening right now. Oh my gosh. I am definitely going to listen. I will give you a review and tell people about it because that is totally Thank up my you. alley. <laughs> I just I just interviewed someone. In fact, I think it's the episode that's going out this week, the week that we are recording this. I interviewed a creativity coach and you know, I mean, we could talk for another hour, but we're not going to, about manifestation <laughs> and visualization and vision boarding because I think so many people have this notion that if you really, really want something, Thing and you create this incredible vision board and you pull some angel cards and you set the intention and you let the universe know that you can then just kind of wait like Amazon Prime and within a couple of days, it'll automatically appear at your doorstep. And I'm like, uh, no. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are really disappointed and think they're doing it wrong. And it's like, mm, no, intention is fantastic and necessary. And envisioning is also, I think, fantastic yeah. and necessary. But you got to back shit up with action that is aligned because yeah. that's where obviously the bravery comes in. So you definitely have a new listener. And I just Thank love you. everything that you're about. I think that definitely wow. a like-minded person and someone who's doing amazing work in the world. I want everyone to get this book and um, make sure that you tag us both and let us know that you heard about it here on The Driven Woman. And once your membership is going and um, you are ready to promote the in-person event, you make sure to let me know so I can let people I be aware of that as well. In the meantime, if you all want to hang out with me, I have a group in Facebook called Brave on Purpose. And 
it is a, just a collective of people who are out doing this in real time, in real life, and want to support one another. So if you go to vickeryandco.com slash Brave on Purpose, or just go to Facebook and search Brave on Purpose, come play. Come play with Dang, us. Dang, that's an invitation you can't refuse. I will make sure that we have links to all of this in the show notes to make it super easy for you to connect with Heather and everything she is about. And you and I need to connect again within the next few days because we're doing a challenge together on video. Oh my God. I'm glad that you got me so in, in a public in a public way so that I can't like chicken out and <laughs> back out. Like that that was fucking brilliant. Okay. So game on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Excellent. folks, that's that's wait. a wrap. You've been listening to the Driven Woman Podcast with Diane Wingert. Want more straight talk and strategy each week that will take you from spinning to winning? Don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast player so you won't miss a single episode. Then head on over to the Driven Woman free and private Facebook group community. See you there.